Hey guys, for this guest tutorial we are going to flash back to the 80s with Mike Miller. He's going to show you how to create some retro style titles for your YouTube channel. Take it away Mike! Hey everybody, Mike Miller here from Triumph Visual and today we're going to look at how to create this cool 80s retro logo animation effect. So here we are in HitFilm Express 2017. The first thing I'm going to do, select the workspace panel and select the built-in compositing workspace. Now let's take a quick look at an actual 1980s intro. Our American users of a certain age will remember this very well. This motion trail look is coming back into style. And another good example of that is Thor Ragnarok. So as we look at the Thor logo, we can see a solid version of the logo coming in and then these neat purple outlines as well as these radial light rays. Let's see if we can build a Thor Ragnarok inspired logo in HitFilm Express. Let's create a new project. I'm going to leave this at 1920 by 1080 and 25 frames per second. And let's create a new composite shot. Let's call this text holder. We're going to go ahead and change the duration to 8 seconds. And we're going to change the size of this composite shot to be 1200 pixels by 400. Then we'll create a new text layer and also make that 1200 by 400 and select the text tool and select the text controls and type in some text. Because we're doing a 1980s logo, we should use a 1980s font. So I'm going to highlight all my text and select the Babylon 5 station font. The font I'm using is called Babylon 5 station and it can be found at freakfonts.com. I want to center this text so I'm going to come down to the paragraph controls and click center alignment. So let's come up to the font size field, click and hold the left mouse button and drag this out to fill the box. We're going to need an outline for this text. So let's come over to this control again by clicking and holding the left mouse button and dragging. I can create the outline that I want. We're also going to want to change the color of the text and the outline. By moving to this color swatch, we can set an outline color. In this case, the outline should be white. By coming over to this larger color swatch, we can set a color for the fill of the text, black. We're done with this composite shot, but we need to create another one. Let's call this text outline. Leave it at 1200 by 400 pixels, leave it at 8 seconds, and leave it at 25 frames per second. Let's go into the media bin and click and drag text holder into text outline. Then let's move up to the effects tab, type in D E. M and demult is what we want. If we drag the demult effect to the text holder layer, this gives us an opaque white outline and a transparent center. Great, we're done with that. Let's create yet another composite shot and we're going to call this text fill. Text fill can stay 8 seconds long, 1200 by 425 frames per second. In text fill, we're going to drag in another copy of the text holder composite shot. Come up to new layer and create a new plane. We're going to call this black plane 1200 by 400 and hit OK. Then drag the black plane underneath the text holder. We'll come up to the effects tab again and type in INV. Grab the invert effect from the color grading and drag that to the text holder layer. Come up to the new layer dialog, create a grade layer, come back up to my effects tab, grab the demult effect and drop that on the grade layer. We now have two separate composite shots, one with a white text outline and a transparent fill, and one with a white fill but no outline. We have our text set up correctly now, we're ready to animate it. So let's go ahead and create another composite shot. We'll call this logo animation, leave it at 8 seconds, but this time we want to make certain that our video dimensions are 1920 by 1080. We want to drag in our text fill composite shot and our text outline composite shot. We'll need to put text fill above text outline and select text outline and parent the text fill layer to that. Okay, we have our text, but it's white on white, so we need to add some color to it. Let's come back to our effects panel, grab the color gradient effect and drag that to the text fill layer. Twirl open the color gradient and change the blend mode from add to normal. We'll also want to change the opacity from 75% to 100. Then come up to the start color and change it from black to how about red. Move to the end color and change that from white to a blue. We'll twirl open the start and end positions 
and change the x value of both the start and the end position to zero. Now by putting the cursor over the y position and clicking and holding the left mouse button, I can now click and drag to reset this position point and do the same thing for the end point. That's not bad. Let's come over to the color gradient, right click, copy the effect, select our text outline layer and paste in this color gradient. Now we're back to our fill and our outline having the same color. So I'll come back over to the effects list, type in invert and drag that to the text outline layer after the color gradient. Let's mute the text fill for now, come back up to the effects list and type in glow. We'll add glow after the invert. Twirl open the glow effect and I'm gonna crank the intensity all the way up to five. I'm gonna adjust the threshold slightly, choke this glow down to about 10 pixels and then turn the intensity back down to something a little bit more realistic. 1.5 looks pretty good. We're ready to animate this layer. So let's come down to the time ruler and type in one semicolon 12. Move over to the transform controls, twirl them open and click the circle next to the position keyframe to activate keyframing for this layer. Now I'm going to want these layers to be 3D. So we'll select the text fill, hold down control to select the text outline and change both of these layers from 2D to 3D. Just click yes when hit fill masks if you wanna add a camera. We'll return to the text outline layer, then move the playhead back to the beginning of the timeline. Come over to the position controls and adjust the Z position until our text is completely off screen. Because of the way our text is set up, this means that the camera is going to pass directly through the letter L. I don't really want that to happen, so I'm gonna go ahead and move the text to the left on the X axis. I'm even gonna move it down a little bit on the Y axis, and then come back to Z and move the text till it's completely off screen. We'll grab the playhead and move it to one second. Grab the control widget and just drag this text a little bit lower. If we play that back, it's not bad, but it's a little fast at the end. I'm just gonna move that up a bit and see what that looks like. Cool. Let's go ahead and move the playhead to four seconds and 12 frames. Move over here and click the toggle keyframe button. Then we'll move the playhead to six seconds come back to our position controls, and I want to type in negative 10,000. Let's make that negative 15,000. And now we're ready to really get into the magic of the effect. We're going to come up and create a grade layer and rename it Echo. We want to move Echo between text outline and text fill. Come back up to the effects list and search for Echo. We want the Echo that we see under Temporal. Let's drag that to the grade layer. I've jumped out of the logo animation comp shot because I want to talk about what the controls of Echo do and I have the Echo effect on this layer. Echo reproduces video frames and overlays them over the current frame. This first control is the Echo time. Negative values use frames from before the current frame as the Echo source. Positive values use frames from the future. So if I change this from negative two to two, you can kind of see what that does. The number of echoes determines how many echoes will be used. I'm going to change this from one to two. Starting opacity determines how opaque or transparent the echo is at the time of its birth. For now, I'll set this to 0.75. The decay setting determines the transparency of subsequent echoes as they fall off. By leaving this at one, echoes will remain the opacity that they are when they spawn for their entire life. By changing this to a lower value, say 0.5, then the echoes get progressively dimmer. Under blend mode, you have a whole bunch of options. All right, we've discussed the echo controls. Let's make some magic. We'll go into the echo grade layer and twirl open the echo effect. I want an echo every five frames at 25 frames per second. This is a time of negative 0.2. And I'm gonna wanna go ahead and make five echoes. We're starting to get some motion trail goodness, but what's happening here is because the blend mode is set to add, it's starting to really push the colors maybe a little bit brighter than I want them. So I'm going to change the composite mode to composite in back. Composite in back draws the original frame behind the echoes. This works very well for something with transparency like this logo. 
Now let's go ahead and turn on our text fill layer. The text fill is moving with the text outline, but because the text fill layer is on top, it's being composited over the echoes. I don't want this. I'm going to move to the frame where the echoes all come to a rest and then go ahead and drag my text fill layer forward so that it begins on that frame. We'll come up to the effects panel, type in glow and drag a glow effect to the text fill layer. And we'll just crank that intensity all the way up to five and take the threshold all the way down to zero. Change the blend mode to add and maybe turn the radius up a bit. If I extend the glow, the edge of the glow is being cut off by the edge of the plane. So I'm going to go ahead and return to the text fill layer, come down to its properties and change its size to a full 1920 by 1080. Return to my logo animation comp. And now if we crank up the radius of the glow, it's not cut off by the edge of the plane anymore. Activate keyframing on the radius and on the intensity. And I'm going to move forward on the time to three seconds. I'm going to really widen out that radius to make this a nice big glow. And then I'm going to turn the intensity down. And I need to change my blend mode from none to add. I'm just going to adjust these intensity and radius controls until I get the look I want. So far, this is looking pretty good, but we can add a little bit more flair to it. So we'll come over, create a new grade layer, and rename this grade layer Zoom Blur, and drag the Zoom Blur effect to the Zoom Blur grade layer. Open the controls for the Zoom Blur, and turn on Keyframing for Strength. I'm also going to go ahead and set the quality from 100 to 10. I'm going to set the strength from 5 to 100, and then I'm going to step back one frame and change the strength from 100 to 5. Then in the Timeline panel, I'm going to scroll down and find the position keyframes for the text outline layer where the text outline begins to recede in the distance. Double click to move my playhead, come back up to the zoom blur and change the strength from 100 to negative 100. I'm also gonna move up to the layer properties for this grade layer and change the blend from normal to screen. That looks pretty good, but there's a couple more things I think we should do. Let's come down to the text fill layer, turn on motion blur, move down to the properties for the composite shot, and come to the advanced tab. I'm going to change the motion blur settings. I'm going to turn the shutter angle up from 180 to 720. I'm going to make the shutter phase negative 360, and I'm going to turn the max samples from 20 down to 10 and turn off adaptive. And the great thing about this is, because of the way we set up our composite shots, this is all procedural. So if I go back to the text holder composite shot, select the text tool and type in anything else and return to my animation comp, everything updates. Let's give this text animation a cool background. Come back up, create another composite shot and I'll call this final animation. In final animation, I'm going to go ahead and drag in my logo animation comp. So let's create a new black plane and place that below the logo animation. Come back up to the effects panel, type in fractal and drag the fractal noise effect to the black plane. Open up the controls for the fractal noise and over here in this field that says preset and drag in star field. Bam, it's a star field. Let's move up to the layer properties for this black plane and change it from normal to add. Then making sure the black plane is selected, I'm going to duplicate that three times. I'm going to open up the fractal noise on each one of these copies and change the seed so that each of these layers has a different value. I'm going to go ahead and select all of my planes and change their compositing modes to 3D. Deselect this top black plane and parent the other three to it. I'm going to open up the position properties for each of my black planes and I'm just going to start pushing these back in space a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and scale these up so that they fill the screen too. Move to the first frame of my animation and then come up to my top black plane. Open up its transform controls and activate keyframing for position. Then I'm going to move to the last frame of the animation and I'm going to change the Z value, bringing all of these stars forward closer to the camera. The last thing I want to do is move to that frame where the logo animation stops. Open up my logo's transform controls, set a keyframe for opacity, and crank that down to zero. Then I'm gonna move back a few frames and set opacity back to 100. This just makes the text animation fade out as it recedes into the distance. All right, that's it.
We've got a cool moving 1980s style retro logo animation and a 3D moving star field. And it was all built in HitFilm Express 2017 using absolutely no add-on packs. I'm Mike Miller from Tri-M Visual. I'll see you next time. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Do remember to subscribe and say hello and well done to Mike Miller if you see him in the comments. We will see you next week. Bye-bye.